As we look at the details of nature, uh, one thing stands out. This is the order, the patterns, the symmetry that surround us. You can see it in a flower, or a snowflake, or even a seashell. What we are seeing is intelligent design, which might be described as God's fingerprints upon nature. One of the more fascinating math relationships was first described back in medieval times, eight centuries ago. The scholar's name was Leonardo Fibonacci, an outstanding Italian mathematician. He excelled in many areas, and one in particular. He generated a long list of numbers by, in each case, adding together the two previous numbers. You can begin with a two and a three. You add them together and you get five. Now add three and five to get eight. Then add five and eight to get 13. The Fibonacci sequence keeps going like this. Two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, and so on. What Fibonacci realized was that this elegant list of numbers describes many items to be found in nature. For example, flower petals. L'exemple des pétales euh, d'une marguerite. Vous dites, il n'y a pas de hasard au nombre de pétales d'une marguerite. Non, absolument. Le, le, le nombre des pétales de marguerite est en fait inscrit dans un scénario qu'on pourrait qualifier de scénario cosmologique, c'est-à-dire que tout a été prévu au départ, et que le nombre des pétales, c'est incroyable. Il n'y a pas une seule marguerite avec 27 pétales, ça n'existe pas. Il n'y a pas de pétales, il n'y a pas de pétales. Il n'y a pas de marguerite avec 27 pétales, c'est pas possible. C'est pas possible. Et euh, le nombre de pétales d'une marguerite est réglé par une loi mathématique qu'on appelle la suite de Fibonacci. That there is a mathematically precise structure to the universe and everything in it. One everyday example of this precision can be found in the plants. Many plants, including elm trees, grow their leaves, twigs and branches placed exactly halfway around the stem from each other. Next in the series are plants like the beech tree, with leaves placed one third of the way around the stem from the previous leaves. Third in the series are the plants like the oak, with leaves placed at every two-fifths of a turn. The holly plant is the next at three-eighths, while the larch trees are the next at five-thirteenths. And the sequence goes on and on. Notice the number sequence of these fractions. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, and so on. Each number is the sum of the two numbers which came just before it in the sequence. This particular mathematical pattern is called the Fibonacci series. Take, for example, the sunflower. The display of its florets are in perfect spirals of 55, 34, and 21. The sequence of Fibonacci. The sequence of Fibonacci. The sequence of Fibonacci. The sequence of Fibonacci. The fruitlets of the pineapple create the same spiral based on the sequence. The pine cone does the same. As currents move through the ocean and the tide rolls onto the shore, the waves that bring in the tide curve into a spiral that can be mathematically diagrammed onto a plot at the points 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and 55. Buds on trees, sand dollars, starfish, petals on flowers are formed with this exact same blueprint. This blueprint can be seen around us on a small scale every day, but the greatest example of all is directly above our heads. At an average of 100,000 light years across, even the spiral of the galaxies above us are formed with the exact design. With the exact design. With the exact design. This sequence, our blueprint, appears to be the trademark of a designer, a proof of a creator. Also known as the golden mean, the divine proportion is a mathematical formulation exhibited in everything from the double helix of DNA. The DNA molecule, the code for life, is made up of two intertwining spirals. We find the 0.618 ratio between the helix's width and cycle length to the form of the human body itself. Do something like measure the distance from the floor to your navel and then from your navel to your head. If you're well proportioned, the ratio should be 1 to 1.618, and that ratio is seen all over the beautiful body.
people started noticing it. Artists noticed it. The width of the mouth in a beautiful face, for example. Yeah. Not in any face, but it had to be beautiful. If a face was beautiful, the width of the mouth was exactly 1.618 times the width of the nose. Right. If the face wasn't beautiful, that wasn't the case. Dentists, yeah. in their dental work, noticed that the upper front tooth was 1.618 times as wide as the next, next tooth over, the lateral incisor. Oh. So the central incisor was 1.618 times the width of the lateral incisor, the next tooth over. Wonderful. Give me some more examples. Uh, your fingers, the, um, the, your fingers are each called phalanges, uh -huh. and each bone in the finger is called a phalanx. And the phalanx that's the most, the closest to your knuckle here, is 1.618 times the, uh, the phalanx that's in the middle, and that's 1.618 times the length of the phalanx at the end, which is your fingernail. So that was kind of amazing. This number would come up over and over again. Then we find the Fibonacci ratio in heart muscles, in bronchial tube branching, even in the electrical potential of neurons, and as Roger Penrose pointed out, even in the arrangement of the brain's microtubules. As we scan our universe from the tiny flower to the awe-inspiring galaxy, we see the fingerprint of God. We see the fingerprint of God. We see the fingerprint of God.